hello guys how are you doing i hope you're great so today i'm going to give you an introduction to remote sensing from a geospatial view yeah my name is jesse and then today i want to give you the basics of remote sensing this is our first tutorial this is our first lecture about remote sensing and more and more are coming just subscribe to this channel and then i'm going to be sharing educative stuff every day every day and also don't forget to invite a friend to like this channel so let us begin so the definition of remote sensing yeah remote sensing is the science and to some extent an art of acquiring information about the earth's surface why is it a science because scientific principles are involved such as transmission radiation absorbance reflectance and other principles and then it is an art because while you are analyzing these images, you put in some bit of art. For example, during map mapping, during choosing colors, during analysis, you have to put in some art. So through sensing that is done by the sensor, the sensor does the sensing, it records the electromagnetic radiation. And then from there, you can process that radiation, analyze it, and then extract useful information. I hope we are fine from here. Actually, the sun produces a broad range of the electromagnetic spectrum, but we are only able to detect blue, green, and red, and other small, small colors which we can see. So, but as an advantage remote sensing has over us, when you use these satellites, you can be able to detect light that we cannot see. So, as you can see, this is an, this is a, an image acquired by a satellite. This is Scotland. This is England and other countries. This is water. And then it was acquired from the sky, as you can see. Yeah. So why should we have remote sensing? Of course, if you want to observe things that you cannot see with your human eye, you should use remote sensing. For example, look at pollution levels in the atmosphere. You can't see that. You can't measure that. Then you need remote sensing. Or... In case you want to measure carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, can you look at that? No. Another example is if you want to map inaccessible re regions, for example, look at volcanic eruptions, you can't go there. Look at a lake, you can't go there. Then you can use remote sensing. So if you want to do a project in the shortest period of time, and then you don't want to go in the field, you just need to get some satellite images analyze them and then you will be able to go and then by so doing you would have reduced the costs and then when you do precise mapping using remote sensing images then the accuracy of your project would be very very fine and there are lots and lots of more advantages of using remote sensing as we shall see in the course of this course yeah so applications of remote sensing Remote sensing can be used in very, very, very many areas in our daily life. So these are a few examples I have used, but then more and more and more. We cannot exhaust them, but however, through my lectures, I will help you to learn how you can use remote sensing to, to, in our day-to-day -day life to do some of these applications. Yeah. So application number one is water quality management. Actually, this is... This was my undergraduate thesis while I was studying at Macquarie University. And then I was using remote sensing to come up with a model that can be used to measure the amount of chlorophyll A concentration on Lake Victoria. And as you can see, this was one of my outputs. This is a map which was showing Lake Victoria's trophic status. Where you see this, these were highly polluted waters. And then where you see this, these were atrophic waters. And that is one application of remote sensing. And then another application is land cover mapping. So this is a project I also did to, to compare the change in land cover in 1995 of this sub-county with that of 2016. As you can see, this is water. And then from seeing just visually you are seeing that the urban areas increased more this is an urban area and then these are urban areas which we are distributed throughout the image 
and then you can see that the wetland reduced because this was a wetland this was a wetland and then you can see a reduction in the wetland also more and more information can be gotten when you do land cover mapping using satellite images so this is fair mapping also it can be done this is urban growth mapping it can also be done using satellite imagery so this is deforestation in brazil so this is an image in 1975 this is an image in 1986 and then this is an image in 1992 and then from seeing you can see that the the, the trees are reducing due to urbanization i seeing urbanization encroaching on the trees so with remote sensing you can be able to study a given activity over a given period of time this is called time series analysis where you have different images at different time intervals and then you analyze them to get changes and lots and lots of which we cannot cover today but through this series i'll share more and more and more with you just subscribe this channel and then just make sure i watch every video i post i want to assure you by the end of it you'll be a very very good remote sensing analyst so let us continue so how does it work when we are doing remote sensing one of the principles is the electromagnetic spectrum remember that electromagnetic energy is broken into different portions so for example we have the blue, the green band, the red band, the near infrared band, the thermo infrared band, the X band, the C band, L band, and the P band. However, this can further be grouped into the UV rays, the visible rays, the infrared rays, the microwave, and the radio waves. So, for remote sensing, there is some part of remote sensing that takes place around here, another one here, and another one here, as you're going to see later. So the remote sensing process, yeah, this is what happens. We have a satellite, we have the Earth's surface, we have the sun, and then we have objects on the Earth. So this is actually passive remote sensing. When the sun is shining, it will send electromagnetic radiation to the Earth's surface. So when this radiation moves, it will hit the Earth's surface, and then it will move towards this satellite, which satellite will record this radiation. However, when it reaches the atmosphere, there are some form of interactions in the atmosphere. So some energy is absorbed, other is scattered, and then some of the energy reaches the what? The sensor. And that energy that reaches the sensor is the one that is recorded, calibrated, it is cleaned, it is stored, and then it is shared as an image i hope that is fine with you yeah this is just an introductory series i wanted to start with this before diving into the waters i hope that is fine so we have passive remote sensing with passive remote sensing the only source of energy is the sun and then without the sun that means we cannot have any remote sensing that takes place as you can see in that picture and then we also have active remote sensing with active remote sensing, the sensor can emit its own energy. It doesn't need the sun. It emits its own energy and then records it, it records its back. So an example is radar or LIDAR. With radar satellites, they will emit their own energy and then they will record it back. I hope that is fine. Yeah. So I want to look at the sensor properties. We have spectral, radiometric, temporal, and then spectral resolution. So, spatial resolution refers to the smallest possible feature that can be detected within a satellite imagery. Actually, it is what is represented by one pixel on the ground. Ideally, so if we have, say, Landsat 8. Landsat 8 has a spatial resolution of 30 meters. That means the, you can distinguish an object up to 30 meters. Below 30 meters, you cannot distinguish that object. And actually, if you're using it for mapping, you cannot map objects that can be see, that cannot be seen below 30 meters. I hope that is fine. And then when we look at the resolution, we have cost resolution. So this is 
a satellite image that is at a resolution of five kilometers so that is very very low that is very very close resolution and as you can see such visual resolution is used to map the world at a very very bigger scale but then we can also have a fine resolution this is washington national airport and this is 0 0.61 meter resolution this is a quick bird image that was taken on december 2001 yeah and then as you can see this is a very fine image so that is the spatial resolution when we have a coarse spatial resolution like this then we can also have a fine spatial resolution i hope that is fine so we go to spectral resolution so what is spectral resolution spectral resolution refers to the ability of the sensor to define fine wavelength intervals what does that mean in case we have a satellite that is able to record energy in narrow 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 bands then it has a very very fine spectral resolution on the other hand if we have a satellite that has wide 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 bands then it has a very coarse spectral resolution yeah so we also have radiometric resolution and then radiometric resolution is just actually from common sense it refers the number of bits used to store a given pixel for example we can have eight bits and then four bits so let me use this picture to demonstrate this is a four bit image and this is an eight bit image so considering this image i see how you can get a contrast among along this line this is dark and then the color changes as you move this side this is because they have used more and more energy levels to represent this image so we go to temporal resolution temporal resolution refers actually sometimes it is called revisit time so it refers to the time a satellite takes to return to the same spot so just imagine a satellite passes me here how long will it take to find me again here if a satellite passes Kampala how long will it take it to come back to that same place in Kampala so for Modis yeah some Modis satellite passes in the morning and then another passes in the evening then for Landsat 8 it has a temporal resolution of 16 days and then Sentinel 2a it has a temporal resolution of five days every five days you'll get an image so how does temporal resolution help us if you have a very high temporal resolution that means you can get your images more often more often more often then that can be used to map abrupt changes and then daily changes i hope that is fine yeah so examples of sensors we have the Landsat Mark Spectral Sensor that was launched in 1972 at a resolution of 8 meters. And then later, and they brought the Landsat Enhanced Thematic Mapper in 1982 at a resolution of 30 meters. There is Sport, there is Econos, there is QuickBird, there is Obview. There are very, very many sensors that are in the atmosphere that we can use for remote sensing yeah so before i close this i want to look at optical remote sensing so remember the electromagnetic spectrum is just a representation of energy levels and then when you are dealing with optical remote sensing we are just dealing with that remote sensing that takes place in the visible and then the near infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum as you can see here on this image I hope that is fine yeah so when we are dealing with optical remote sensing we have panchromatic sensors these are sensors that are only sensitive to radiation within a given band but this band can be broad so to, to visualize it more more think of a sensor that records image but within one band so such examples include Econos and then 
econos panchromatic and then spot hrv panchromatic yeah so we can also have multispectral sensors what are multispectral sensors these are sensors which have a, a few more bands a few more bands why am i saying a few more bands they don't have a lot of bands but they don't have a few bands so it is a few more bands so look at landsat atm or landsat my spectral sensor the number of bands they have they are not small but they are not very much and then among all those bands each band has is specific to a given wavelength for example you have a blue green red near infrared the more infrared mm, etc 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 and then we can also have hyperspectral sensors actually the hyperspectral sensors acquire a lot of images in different bands look at a, a satellite that has multitude and multitude of bands they can even stretch up to a hundred so these ones are used in precise applications iggy crop earth mapping precise land cover mapping etc etc yeah so but then when you are doing optical remote sensing one of the guiding principle even soil but then water reflects slow so by interpreting this spectral curve we can be able to map different materials on the earth's surface so for example if i want to map vegetation i'll take keen interest in the near infrared but on the other hand if i want to map water i'll take keen interest around this band i hope that is fine yeah thank you for watching before we dive into the software and all the tutorials, I wanted to give you a brief introduction to remote sensing. It is just a brief introduction to remote sensing. In our next video, we are going to cover more and more and more stuff. Keep tuned for more stuff. Thank you for watching.